The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Wednesday, September 21st, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Houston Astros at Tampa Bay Rays. Well the under is a solid choice, the play here is Houston. The Astros have won each of the last five on the road. Houston starting pitcher Lance McCullers Jr. has allowed a total of just six runs on 16 hits across 23 T innings over the last four starts, resulting in Houston winning three of the four. Tampa Bay starter Corey Kluber has been roughed up in each of the last two starts, allowing 10 runs on 17 hits across 6 S innings, resulting in a pair of losses for the Rays. Our team pick is. Houston minus 130. These are two playoff teams and are some of the best pitching teams in the majors. The first two games of the series have a total of 9 runs this series. Lance McCullers Jr. is 3-1 with a 2.34 ERA in his last six games, while Corey Kluber pitched well at home, as he is 7-3 with a 3.92 ERA in 14 games. These bullpens have been killing it as the Astros have a 2.70 team bullpen ERA, which is the best in the bigs, while the Rays are 6th with a 3.23 reliever ERA this year. And NBSP, the under is 27-8-2 in the previous 37 games between them in Tropicana Field, so go with under 7 runs in this game. Under 7 runs. Cincinnati Reds vs Boston Red Sox. At the plate, the Red Sox are scoring 4.62 runs per game, and they are hitting .259 as a team. This is the 8th most runs scored per game, and the 4th highest overall team batting average. Boston can string together hits, and they have been clutch when they have men in scoring position. The Red Sox have also realized that they don't have a ton of power littered inside of their lineup. They are only hitting .94 bombs per game, which is the 21st highest average in the MLB. Watch for Rafael Devers at the plate, as he leads the team with 26 home runs this season. I would also expect the Red Sox to stay conservative once they have reached base safely. They have only taken 51 bases this regular season, which is the 25th most in the MLB. They have allowed their bats to move base runners into scoring position. At the plate, the Reds are scoring 4.27 runs per game, and they are hitting .239 as a team. This is the 18th most runs scored per game, and the 20th highest overall team batting average. They have struggled to consistently reach base this season, which has made it much more difficult to score. Luckily, they have found out that they do have some power littered throughout their batting lineup. They are averaging 1.01 home runs per game, which is the 18th most in the MLB. I would recommend watching for Kyle Farmer at the plate, as he has already hit 12 home runs, and he is hitting .260. He leads the team in both of those categories. I would also expect the Reds to play it safe once they reach base safely. They have only stolen 54 bases this season, which is the 24th most in the MLB. I'm gonna hammer the Boston Red Sox money line in this matchup. I understand that the Red Sox haven't announced who their starting pitcher is, but I still see them being the better overall team. Cincinnati has struggled all season and they are not hot right now. They are 2-8 in their last 10, as they aren't seeing the ball well. The Reds are currently scoring the 18th most runs per game, and they have the 20th highest overall team batting average. The Boston bullpen will come into this game and silence the Reds' bats for the majority of this game. They didn't impress me in their last series against the Cardinals, and I see them staying cold in this one. Now, the Red Sox are going to be able to tee off on Chase Anderson early in this game. He is currently 0-2 at home this season, and he has a 6.43 ERA. He will continue to leave the ball over the middle of the plate, and the Red Sox will take advantage. They are scoring the 8th most runs per game, and they have the 4th highest team batting average. They will consistently reach base throughout this game and give themselves multiple chances to score. I trust them when they have men in scoring position, and the Reds' bullpen has been one of the worst this season. They are allowing the fourth most runs per game, as the Red Sox will be able to score consistently throughout this one. Our team pick is. Boston Red Sox for the win. Boston manager Joey Cora has yet to name a starting pitcher for this game. The Red Sox rank in the bottom third of the majors with a 4.45 team ERA and have logged 42 quality starts. 
The Cincinnati Reds have lost 8 of their last 10 games and have been unable to overcome their dreadful 3-22 start to the year. On Tuesday, Cincinnati batters went 0-4-9 with runners in scoring position and left 10 men on base. SP Nicoladolo, 4-7, gave up 3 runs in 5 innings and took the loss for the Reds, who fell to 58-90 on the year. 34-year-old righty Chase Anderson, 1-3-6.43 ERA, will make his fifth start of the season for the Reds. Last time out, Anderson allowed one run in five innings during a 3-2 road victory against St. Louis. Boston 2B Trevor Story, heel, has missed six consecutive games and remains listed as day-to-day. -day. Through 147 games, Boston ranks 9th in ops and 9th in runs scored. For the season, Cincinnati ranks 24th in ops and 20th in runs scored. Take the over 9.5 runs. Chicago Cubs vs Miami Marlins Chicago put together one of its best series of the season last week, sweeping three games in New York against the NL East leading Mets. The Cubs extended their winning streak to four games with a 2-1 win over Colorado on Friday, but they proceeded to lose the final two games of the series. Their losing skid continued on Monday as they lost to Miami in a 10-3 final. They are on a seven-game road trip that concludes with four games against the Pirates this coming weekend. Chicago will return home for a six-game homestand next week, which will be its final home games of the year. The Cubs have already been eliminated from playoff contention. Miami had an encouraging start to the season, sitting just five games below the .500 mark heading into the All-Star break. The Marlins have really struggled since then, failing to win more than two consecutive games at any point. They have a chance to do that on Tuesday night, after closing their series against Washington with a 3-1 win on Sunday and opening this series against Chicago with a 10-3 win on Monday. Miami is on a six-game homestand that concludes with three games against Washington this weekend. The Marlins, like the Cubs, have already had their playoff hopes officially dashed. They have been a decent offensive team this season, ranked number 17 in batting average, .241. Left fielder Ian Happ leads the way with 142 hits, while shortstop Nico Horner has 129 hits. They are facing a Miami pitching staff that is number 17 with an ERA of 3.96. Left-handed pitcher Drew Smiley was originally going to start for Chicago on Wednesday, but he is experiencing shoulder fatigue and was scratched on Tuesday. Marcus Stroman is moving up a day in the rotation and starting in this game. He allowed one run on three hits and two walks across seven innings against Colorado last Friday. Stroman threw six scoreless innings before allowing a solo homer. He has a 2.95 ERA and 1.20 whip in his 64 innings since the All-Star break. Chicago has been more competitive than Miami during the second half of the season, but I am going to back the Marlins on Wednesday night. They have won four of their last five home games against Chicago and have finally strung a few wins together of late. Lizardo has thrown six quality starts in his last eight appearances, posting a sub-3.60 ERA during that stretch. Stroman is having his spot in the rotation bumped up a day on short notice, which could throw him out of rhythm. Miami has won eight of the last 12 meetings between these teams overall, so I am going to take the Marlins again in this spot. Our team pick is Miami for the win. After an interesting offseason where they looked like they would be trying to go for winning games and moving along the rebuild, the Chicago Cubs are 20 games under .500 and out of any playoff picture in the National League. The team definitely has some bright spots but needs to continue to show improvement with a relatively young roster. They have lost three of their last four games and need to get back on the winning track here. There have been times in the last few years where it looks like things are turning around for the Miami Marlins, but typically they have been consistently looking for answers. This team has a lot of pitching talent with guys like Sandy Alcantara, Pablo Lopez, and Jesus Luzardo as starting pitchers, but has not been able to find the offense to help this young group win games, our total pick is under the total.